So, uh, hi everybody, welcome to Open. Welcome to OpenStack is doomed. That's all. I'm why you're all here at this conference, right? Um, there were some alternate titles for the talk. Some of you might have seen it flash by. Um, OpenStack is doomed, or how I learned to stop worrying and accept complete corporate control. Um, my job here is to sort of poke the bear, rile you guys up. Um, you may not agree with everything I say, but if you do, I accept a variety of forms of payment. Um, if they have something funny to contribute and shout it out, I probably won't be angry with you. Um, I know I would. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, it might be my fault too, because I helped write a bunch of these things a long time ago. Um, thanks for showing up for my wonderful clickbait um, title. Um, if you don't know who I am, uh, some may consider you lucky. Um, hopefully none of them are in the room. But I'm one of the original little group who wrote Nova um, before this OpenStack stuff all started with a couple people in here. And I've worked at NASA, ANSO, Rackspace, Nebula, and Piston. Um, and nowadays, I'm the CTO of a great little startup focused on developer experience and nothing at all OpenStack related. So to help you out with, uh, with the talk, um, to figure out you know, what I'm talking about in different things, I made a little guide here. Um, I'll try to use different colors to denote different types of statements I'm making. <laughs> that way you can figure out you know, where I'm going with things. Um, I don't want anybody to be confused. So here's a few examples to help out. Incendiary. Everything that touches Launchpad is poisoned. Um, I really fucking hated Launchpad, or <clears throat> darn hated Launchpad. Um, I fought pretty much day and night against it as we, when we started it. Um, clearly, the a bunch of people quite liked it. But uh, I actually had to spend... I spent a lot of time writing a bi-directional bridge so I wouldn't have to use uh, BZR. Um, it actually still gets like GitHub things just because people hate BZR that much. But Git actually has its own bi-directional bridge now, so you don't need to use mine. Um, this is a doom thing. The Rackspace API was the worst thing to ever happen to Nova. Um, it's really not what we wanted. It was extremely delayed. Um, it really sort of set the stage for kind of what was next. Um, things that are your fault. Keystone should not have its own user database. Um, somehow I like left for a week and we got a user database. Um, <laughs> They might have a session going on right now. I don't know what's, what's going on there. But um, yeah, the original Keystone Lite stuff was really the goal was to just back end on your existing user databases. You as big companies have your own. Um, yeah, there's no real reason to write our own. Um, and then unrelated to this presentation, uh, Amazon Web Services names their stuff way better than we do. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of really weird names in here. Uh, it, they, none of them really make any sense unless you know some really weird inside joke. Um, so it would be nice to fix that at some point. Um, so just to figure out who's going to beat me up later, uh, can everybody who is a developer or an ops person raise their hand? All right. Um, keep your hands up. Now, if you've contributed to other open source projects besides OpenStack, keep your hand up. All right, cool. So we have a lot of people. Um, you people with the hands up, don't tell the people who don't have their hands up whatever I'm blatantly lying. You can put your hands down now. So in order to talk about something being doomed, we have to kind of decide where it was trying to go in the first place. So um, this is a thing copied off of that, uh, that website that I didn't like. Um, and this is what's, what's been on there. I don't know when it was last updated. Um, but there's something important that stands out in that for me. Um, it's definitely one of the things I cared about most when, I, when we started with this project. Um, one of the reasons why we were trying to make Nova and not um, use Eucalyptus, for example, was WS star. Um, so uh, tons of SAML, SOAP, uh, WSDL, things like this, are what we were trying to get away from. Um, and then the very first thing was an API that was very heavily uh, WSDL um, compliant. So yeah, this used to be the thing I cared about most before uh, OpenStack broke my heart. But, uh, yeah, sad times. Um, but, you know, people are excited about the implementation now. Um, people who have Stockholm Syndrome and people who are consultants. So <laughs> it's a good, um, it's good for some people. So there's 143 projects listed on Launchpad. Um, some of those are corpses of projects. Some of those are reanimated corpses of projects. Um, plenty of them do more or less the same thing, but in ways that are incompatible. Um, anybody who knows who they all are is probably on the technical committee. Um, and even then, I would be uh, surprised. 
if they, if they actually did. Um, if there was an Olympic event for feature creep, OpenStack would definitely take the gold. Um, there's 85 things called plugins in Nova. So I haven't looked at Nova a lot lately. I just was scanning through the code base when I was making this talk. Um, there's a directory under the Nova API v3 called plugins. There's 85 things in there. Um, besides the fact that you know, the Nova API is pretty much undefinable because of this, um, I think somebody forgot an important rule about open source software, and that is saying we have a plugin API is basically your, way, your nice way of saying we don't want your code. Um, <laughs> Plugins don't belong in the repo. They belong somewhere else where you don't have to look at them or care about them. Um, the, if, if we wanted it, it would be a feature. Likewise, there's also 91 contrib modules that seem to be more or less overlap with the API modules. I don't know. I don't like directories with 90 things in them. Um, I'm not really sure what any of those things are anymore. I don't, again, know whether anybody else is. Ideally, there's probably some test somewhere that's te checking whether they work. Um, and if you turn on one of the options somewhere, you might have it installed or something. Um, yeah, it, it, makes me, it makes me pretty sad, actually. Um, the other big one, this is a great joke, right? It's, uh, it's on the DreamHost shirts. Um, but basically, barring Cloud Foundry's Bosch, um, I don't think anybody's worked with a more complicated setup system um, for a tool, right? So it's, a, uh, it's probably the most complicated shell script anybody in this room has ever seen. Um, it does basically define what OpenStack is at this point, as far as I can tell, um, but it is not, uh, it's not simple. Um, so how did we get to this, right? We, we, we are no longer simple to implement. Um, making something simple after the fact is just about impossible. Um, the usual way it works is somebody does a rewrite that replaces the old thing. This is how we got, say, Firefox out of Mozilla, um, or, for example, Keystone Lite out of Keystone. Um, it's, it's, very, it's a very active um, job to keep anything simple. You really have to be very, uh, very attentive the whole time. Every option you add will be there forever. Uh, we have a lot of them throughout a lot of projects. Um, knowing how to keep something simple requires having a definable problem, something that you, uh, you actually know you can solve. Um, As soon as you start trying to solve other additional problems outside of your original scope, you start getting feature creep. Uh, the waters become less clear. The original plan needs modification. It may not really fit. Um, and that's where most of your technical debt will come from. Um, every API call you add will be there forever. Um, there's, that's, that's one of the saddest things for me about the Rackspace API was it's really been how many years now that we were, we were stuck with a sort of non-conforming API. Um, it took months and months and months to sort of implement. Um, and it really didn't match the project at all. Um, it's why very few projects that ev don't evolve into spaces they, weren't, they didn't start in. Um, they started with an epiphany. You had an idea for an elegant solution to a problem. And then you ended up with uh, feature creep. You, as you grow into new things, the solution no longer fits the problem. Then you usually go and you refactor and write again. Um, uh, but usually, the, at that point, it is nice, at least, that um, the new problems you've run into are only now addressable because you've solved the original problem. So you got that going for you. The next rewrite is usually better. Um, but that's how technical debt is formed. It's the, the fifth auth authentication system you write is usually better than the first, second, third, and fourth. Um, and by the time you finish it, you already know what you want to do for the sixth. So you have to usually, yeah, you have to take a strong stand on things. Um, is Jim Baker in the room? There we are. Uh, I met this guy at the, um, at the HP party um, at the Ranger station or whatever, Mountaineer station. Um, and I told him I put it in the slide. In the slide. Uh, we were trying to decide on whether we wanted the avocado or bacon grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, and so it's a hard decision. And so, yeah, of course, you say, hey, why not both? Um, <laughs> which more or less works for grilled cheese sandwiches besides the obvious uh, heart attack area. But um, it doesn't work that way for software. If you, if you take both sides on software, you end up with a very indecisive, um, a very indecisive code base. Uh, one of the big challenges for getting sort of external corporate approval for, uh, for OpenStack early on was the fact that Rackspace was seen as being uh, like too in control. Um, everybody thought that since they paid for all the conferences and things like this, um, that other big companies, you know, the HPs, IBMs of the world, uh, weren't going to uh, join, the, join the project. So very early on, um, we uh, got a committee. We got like a board, uh, I forget what it was called at the beginning, oversight committee or something? 
Project Policy Board. Um, yeah, boo, that's right. Whoever's out there. Um, yeah, so basically you suddenly had to get things sort of approved via a, like a political committee. Um, there were ways, it was supposed to sort of be a way to solve arguments, but in the end it basically didn't. Um, things have improved slightly um, since then. Uh, change, there's ch been changes in what sort of the roles are of the board, but the amount of time we spent dealing with the project policy board rather than um, making development really slowed stuff down. Um, do we need the board now? Hell yes, this thing is a gigantic machine now, right? There's 6,000 people at this conference. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's a political, political beast that a lot of people have you know, their, um, their uh, horse in the race on. But, but back then, it was, it was a really bad thing for the project. Um, multiple groups with opposing views cannot all own a code base. Uh, it got really bad, like warring patches, implementing the same things in different ways, uh, people trying to hide their code in places uh, where other people with opposing opinions wouldn't, um, wouldn't see them, wouldn't notice them until they were already in the code base, and it's much harder to get something pulled out than it is to get something in. Um, it got to the point where people were literally sneaking in code that they knew I wouldn't approve when I was asleep. Um, <laughs> and which, again, is why some people are part, like, don't like me, because I was very adamant about I don't want these things in, and people just would go around it. Um, entire projects came into existence uh, simply because individuals refused to work together. Um, they wanted to do something their own way, and the way back then to do something your own way was to sort of fork off a project. Um, that way you could build your little section of it uh, your own way, which re resulted in many types of APIs, things like that. We can't all own the same code base. Um, somebody has to, to run it. Um, a committee was not the right choice. Um, it's basic, committee, the software designed by, designed by committee is, uh, doesn't really, uh, it, it doesn't go anywhere. It, it's, it, you, start, you have features, that you just add features and features and features, um, nothing really gets better. Um, those team, you need a good software designed by a team. Those teams can be across companies, but they have to be working together towards the same goal. Um, a committee is working towards multiple goals and compromises that leads things to having a, uh, yeah, a very non-decisive um, non decisive code base. I didn't want my project to be open source so that people could tell me what to do um, or so that they could you know, help me write my code. Like, I already know what I want to write. Open source is not about contributions. Um, so OpenStack always is talking about how many contributors there are. Um, open source is not there so that you get people to write, other people to write your code. Um, it's, it's there so that people can uh, find out what went wrong. It's so, it's so that you can share the code with people, and sometimes somebody will come in who starts working closely with the project and has opinions about it. But open source is about providing a better product. Um, so people sometimes uh, challenge, uh, like say, Google or someone for like, throwing things over the wall. Um, you, want, you want insight into the development process um, as a developer, because like, maybe there is a feature that I'm really hoping is coming, and I ask a question about it, and you say, oh, that's coming soon. You can actually see when it's, when it's showing up. Um, but really, open source is about providing a better product. As a, if you're an ops person, if you're a dev person, uh, when you're using this thing, it will break, guaranteed. You will never use a piece of software in your life that does not break, um, except maybe something written in like Ada. Um, and the goal is to find out what the person who wrote the software was thinking, so you can figure out how to fix your own problem. It's not so that you can go and have a uh, input on the direction of the project. Um, it'd be nice to, but really that's not, that's not their role. They're giving you something and it's better than what it would be if it's closed source. Um, Mark talked a little bit in his presentation about uh, experiments. So you know, OpenStack was kind of an experiment and we have a lot of new experiments. Um, some of the smaller projects I think are doing uh, actually pretty well looking, through, looking over stuff. Um, they're pretty well, they have a pretty well defined scope. They, um, they have a small enough team that they can actually still get some stuff done. Um, but without having an opinion as to what we wanted to do, this is, this is an experiment without controls. It's sort of just wandering. We, like, we, let the, we let the rat loose in the office and we're hoping to catch it later on or something. It's not, um, it can't be proven or disproven whether it actually has solved the problem or not. Um, it simply just keeps on growing. And so right now that's all we're doing. We're like Akira at the end. We're just growing and growing and growing. Um, with an opinion, you have variables. You have controls in your experiment and variables. You can try again next time and do a different thing and have an idea that you might actually do a, uh, make a better you know, solution. Um, but the more I thought about it, I realized OpenStack did sort of pick a side. Um, and they actually really knocked it out of the park. They did, they did an extremely good job. Um, it's by far the most successful project I've ever started or worked on early on. Um, 
and I've you know had successful startups and things like this. Um, OpenStack is definitely a bigger uh, bigger business than any of those. Um, unfortunately for me, the side OpenStack picked is money. Um, they, we wouldn't have 6,000 people here without it. Um, it was decided very early on that we needed enterprise buy-in and like literal buy-in um, to, to make this thing real. We're competing against people like Amazon um, who have a very large cloud and the only way to, for everybody to feel like they can get the, uh, the attention that they need is through very large companies um, helping. Um, and that kind of fight is not cheap. It's big, it has, a, it has to have a big marketing department, everything like this, of which OpenStack does. Um, uh, so sort of my statement here is that OpenStack isn't people. Um, can we do like a hand raising thing again? Um, who here has worked for a rack space? I know I have. All right, anybody from HP? How about uh, Dell? Cisco? IBM? Uh, who else is here? Uh, Mirantis? <laughs> yeah! Um, <laughs> and there's, uh, there's some rare individuals who just like are really into it themselves, and there's a lot of smaller companies that have joined. Um, but a huge percentage of the people here are from, from large companies. OpenStack is actually companies. Um, and that's okay. They come in two varieties. There's those with heavy open source backgrounds. Oh, I should also say uh, Red Hat. Yeah, there we go. Ubuntu. Thanks, Soren. Um, <laughs> The, uh, those, are, those are companies with large open source backgrounds. So the, a lot of the stuff they, they contributed um, were contributed in a sort of a normal open source uh, way. And a lot of other companies work on open source software or they've hired people who had good open source backgrounds. Um, but there's also a lot of companies here that are name on a box companies, that they sell a product. OpenStack is a way for them to get more, their product sold more. Um, and again, it, it works, um, it's good, it's, it's been for that and they've, um, They've been, getting, they've been getting what they want out of it, which is uh, their name in front of more people and things like this. Um, unfortunately for me, that's astroturfing. That's not a community. That's, so I didn't put the word OpenStack on here because if people are taking a picture, I don't, it's, it's such a dirty word to me that I don't want, I don't want to soil this thing, OpenStack, by putting those two words in, together. But really that's what is happening. Um, there's a lot of community decisions that are led by large companies. Um, and that's not really a community decision. Um, it means the community is the companies, not the people. Um, and I think that it's, a, uh, it's definitely a misnomer to, to claim that this was sort of the people's, the people's cloud. Um, it's not grassroots. Uh, and everybody know like, what AstroTurf means? It's like fake grassroots movement. And that's fine. Um, again, it's working. Uh, it works for tons of people. It's obviously being used by tons of people. We see great keynotes every year by uh, gigantic companies using it in large ways, um, making plenty of people plenty of money. It's a great ecosystem. Um, it's getting incrementally better at a bunch of the things it does. Uh, it's uh, just not what I wanted, right? When, when I was writing the software, I wanted to, to have the you know, a product, a user experience, like a developer experience. I wanted, to, um, I wanted to change this cloud thing because there's so many interesting, fun, moving parts and cool algorithms and other neat things to try. Um, I wanted my opinion validated by usage. I wanted a platform for like, redefining how I use a computer every day. I want no more usernames. I want um, ubiquitous computing where my local machine and, my, um, and machines in like, my office and everywhere else are just running whatever jobs. Um, one of the things I loved most when I was working at Google is every time I compiled something, it compiled on like 80 machines somewhere. It was great. Um, that's what I wanted. Um, I wanted to build that system for, for everybody. Um, I wanted organic. I wanted to be like the substrate that Skynet is going to be built on. You know, I wanted the machines to win, um, but you know, because there's been such strong push for you know from vendors and feature creep, um, the de developer experience has been just really shoddy. There's um, I don't work on software because I'm paid to work on software. I work on software because I love writing software, um, and it's just not an experience that's pleasant at all in OpenStack. Um, it's heavily political, heavily bloated. And there's so very, 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 very many moving parts. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's unfortunately not, uh, not a nice place to be. So if you were to do this again, what would you change? Um, anybody who's worked has answers to this. There's plenty of things that you'd like to have had done differently the first time. Um, so here are some uh, out, of, out of context quotes from the community. Uh, <laughs> That's Vish. 
Sorry, I was wrong. Um, I made this up, so it's not really a quote from Bish. Um, <laughs> but the... <clears throat> I told him I was going to put it on there anyway. Um, we've made mistakes. Let's, uh, you know, say that's okay. We can do it again. That's, there's a lot of code there. Most of it doesn't need to be. Um, a lot of it's implementing things we, we never needed in the first place and working around stuff we implemented that we wouldn't do again this way. Um, we, our, 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 resident, our resident spook um, had a lot to say on the matter. Um, and, you know, that's... I think, I think actually, they were, they were one of my like, most pleasant experiences early on, um, very quietly in the back of the room, suggesting nice improvements every so often without necessarily having any, um, without seeming to try to make a power play. They're not selling a product. They're just trying to make their product better. Um, I think that is, that's the mindset we wanted, right? We wanted, to, how do we make this product better, not how do we make this product support my thing? So speaking of supporting things, um, the... <laughs> Uh, I was very proud of I was very proud of, of Mike um, in the last release of cutting out a whole bunch of drivers out of Cinder, um, and I think he gave this little quote in a session somewhere. So hopefully some reporters get to it too. Um, and they said, well, you know, hey, aren't you aren't you worried that removing all these drivers is going to um, is going to make your project fail? And so there's a lot of drivers already in Cinder. Um, it supports a lot of things. Um, he doesn't need. He doesn't need uh, the corporate buy-in. They need a buy-in to his stuff, right? And that's the way we should have been. Um, that's the, that's the, the dream of OpenStack for me, right? Was that I was defining something with a great dis abstraction that companies would then come to and want to use. I didn't want the companies to define the project. Um, uh, Spark Sparky has been a wonderful, uh, <laughs> a, a, a wonderful contribution to this whole thing. Um, and he's, he's done a great job at making sure everybody you know, hears about us and does things. Now he's like running the foundation with uh, Jonathan and, and all those people. Um, I, yeah, there's not really anything to say about this code. It's just a funny slide, I guess. Uh, but um, yeah. <laughs> so I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, I think the five-year five experiment is done. Um, we've gone as far down this path as anybody should ever want to. Um, we're never going to fix the technical debt of Nova inside Nova. For example, it's too big. Um, it has to be changed. We're, we've been um, the experiment went off the rails years ago. Uh, we've been being held hostage in like a room full of a thousand cooks, um, and it's a very busy kitchen. It's not. Um, yeah, it's. We have to escape. So, I think we should rewrite go, rewrite Nova. Um, I don't think it needs to do all the things it does right now. I think we could probably make a lot of better decisions than the decisions that, you know. 100-ish people have made over five years, or made five years ago, um, as to what it should support. Um, I think uh, it's a, probably a fun job um, to say these are the things that we actually care about, and you get to be opinionated, write fun software, um, and yeah, I think that's where we should go with this. Um, <laughs> I never really liked Glance. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's just a list of URLs, guys. Like. I don't know. It, yeah. It was one of those projects that exist, existed because two people couldn't work together. So, um, and then, you know, we tried to salvage it, but yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Um, I'd love to stop with the terrible APIs. Uh, just find an actual web developer anywhere and ask him how to do it. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous having a bunch of systems guys write APIs. Um, because it's, yeah, you really just don't know what you're doing, man. Um, and so, yeah, I think we should, you know, stop it with those. Go look at actual web things. I'm sure some of the, some of the projects probably have nice APIs, um, some of the later projects. But, um, but yeah, we have a lot of, a lot of weird calls. Um, I think this is a device that sort of goes beyond OpenStack. Um, it's, uh, but people, people have been towing the party line very heavily for a very long time. Um, and... Yeah, think for yourself, you know? It's, it's, not, it's not your boss's, you're not trying to implement what HP wants or IBM wants. You, you, should, you should buy into the project, buy into a vision and buy into a dream, and you should work on that. Um, and then tell your bosses, that's what we're doing. So I think we should start the new experiment. Um, 
do start the next one, make a new Nova, make something, make something better, something clean, something lovely that we'd all like to work on. Um, take some sides, maybe even your own side. Um, have an opinion. You can produce a lot of code very quickly. There's a lot of tools nowadays. You can make proof of concepts. Again, Nova was written over a weekend, and it replaced very rapidly stuff that was much, much more mature than it was. Um, Nova 2.0 or whatever can happen the same way. Um, so OpenStack is doomed. Long live OpenStack. Uh, so that's about all I can handle talking about it. Uh, I'm willing to take some questions. I don't know whether they're, that's like the kind of talk for questions. All right, this guy. Can you give a concrete example of what you would write in Nova? What's your top priority? Um, so I think, I think there's a, the, the question is, uh, could you give a concrete example of what you would sort of rewrite in Nova? Um, I think the, so the API, first off, um, there's really no reason to have a um, API as epically large as that. Um, a lot of the things were started based on having the, um, the Rackspace API and the sort of concepts listed there. Um, those are sort of old ideas nowadays. We know a lot more about cloud stuff. Um, we've seen all the different things that people have, are writing for cloud. Uh, containers, containers are a really lovely way to like bundle your apps, right? The code, the processes you would like to write. Um, I think probably a, uh, probably a focus on um, bare metal. Um, with a stronger container system, I think, is probably what most people out there who are building cloud software nowadays want to do. That's, like the, that's what is currently happening. Um, you uh, having an easy way to wrap containerized things in VMs for security purposes. I think those things are stuff that people care about now. Um, I don't think it's as exciting anymore to just spawn a VM. It's no longer, no longer interesting. Um, so yeah, that's that's something I would do. I would I would basically focus on focus on bare metal, containers, um, and not necessarily just Docker. So uh, any other comments or anything like this? Cool. Well, my job here is done. I hope uh, I hope some of you have uh, taken at least some of the things a little bit seriously. Oh, someone over there. Yeah, I, I just, I've been giving talks on containers a lot. My company does container stuff. Any, talk, any other ideas on containers since it's a hot topic right now? Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've talked a lot about containers. Um, uh, I think the, well, if, since we're on just like opinion talk, uh, I, think, I think Docker doesn't have anybody's best interest in mind um, besides Docker's, and that's sort of sad to me. Um, I think that they, are very much trying to centralize control over the ecosystem, um, and it's not somewhere I want to be. Um, I don't want to be in something where I have to talk to them to get my things. Um, so obviously, uh, so Rocket is a sort of up and coming alternative. Uh, LXC and LXD are other different nice ways to start um, containers and things like this. But um, the what Docker got right was the UX. Right, they had a product and they got a, they got a UX that worked. Um, it rapidly went off the rails. Um, it has a lot of bad UX now too, but um, but yeah, I think I think separating I think Docker is not going to be the answer, I guess, on containers. But um, Rocket isn't yet the answer either, so we'll see where it goes. Um, I think maybe OpenStack could have an opinion. Uh, go ahead. So what's Governance 2.0 look like? Um, governance 2.0 is big tent. Um, I think that's a good start. Uh, so I think, I th uh, so what does governance 2.0 look like is the question. Um, I, think, I, I think Big Tent is a good start with the idea that we are, um, again, like I said earlier on, uh, plugins don't belong in your repository. Um, OpenStack stuff doesn't have to be under an OpenStack uh, umbrella. Um, it doesn't have to be an incubated project or any of these things. These are all terrible, terrible, terrible ideas. Um, when really, if you're trying to build a community, you want that one guy over there's random project to be able to interact with your stuff um, without them having to sign papers and be uh, beholden to some committee. Um, Woohoo! Yeah. Um, so I, I think I think Big Ten's a good start. Um, I think having less governance is better for most of that stuff. I do think there's still various governance related to, say, um, 
uh, branding and things like this. I, I know they talk about it a lot. I don't know what the current state of the art as far as who's allowed to use the OpenStack logo or for what reasons. Um, I'm an open source guy. All my stuff's always like MIT licensed. Um, I say use whatever you want. You know, use the logo whenever you want it. Say like, we, we support this. And if you don't support it, and you said you did, your customers will find out pretty quick and not use you. So um, I don't think that's too, too bad. But, but yeah, I'm a, definitely a less governance kind of person. I think fighting with technical committees has wasted a lot of my life. So. Oh. Do you think mandating Python makes sense going forward? Um, do I think mandating Python makes sense going forward? Uh, I, I would say no, except that the APIs are pretty bad. And so um, in, order to, in order to have multilingual support for stuff, uh, like a, poly, a polyglot language, um, you really need to have a, a very strong sort of API system. Um, things, things like protocol buffers, stuff like that, helps a lot for doing multilingual stuff. Um, they have a common, common APIs for multiple languages. Um, it can be done. I like Go. I write everything in Go now. Um, I like Python too, but, um, but for the most part, I write stuff in Go. Um, I, think, I think we're big enough now that it doesn't really matter what language things are written in. Um, but if you, as soon as you write in something else, you don't have access to what Oslo is, is OpenStack common now, or right? Yeah. Um, you don't have access to stuff that's in there. Um, but I think that's probably OK. Um, I think. Wasn't, did Dean was, uh, did you get go with Glo, Go for the OpenStack client? No. No, okay. It's still, um, it's still a toy. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, so um, he said no, he didn't go with Go for the OpenStack client. But I think that would be a good test of the community. If you tried to write a unified client in another language, you would uh, rapidly see um, how difficult it is to define your APIs. Um, and so I, I've tried a couple times and sort of failed. That's why it's still a toy. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's why it's still a toy is what Dean said. Um, so I would like to see other languages, just because I would. What's up? Right oh, so Swift has a branch in Go right now, so that's cool. I think that's probably because those guys are like really bored of working on the same code base. Um, <laughs> Swift, Swift has been like a very stable project for a very long time, and so um, yeah, I think I think those guys are antsy to mess with new stuff. Um, yeah. Any other random opinions on things? All right. Uh, I am going to cut out early then. Thank you.